Okay, let's go and figure out this nice, lovely little math word problem. And the first step, of course, is to read the problem. So let's go and uh, do that right now. It says uh, the sum of two numbers is 32. One number is one third of the other number. What are the numbers? So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But here is what I hope you don't do. Hope you don't look at this problem and you're like, oh, I can't figure this out. This is too hard. Well, you know, if you don't really attempt the prom, you're kind of selling yourself short. OK, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of you can reason through this problem. OK, you can use common sense to figure this problem out. So don't give up so quickly if you're just looking at it like I can't do this. We're going to talk about a couple different approaches to solve this problem. But when you solve any problem in mathematics, you do want to try to justify your conclusion. So when you put your answer down, even if you do get it right, you want to think through how could you explain your results to someone and be like, look, I knew how to do it right. You do this, this, and this. Okay, But don't forget that common sense is an approach. You don't have to be fancy and use algebra you know, for all problems. I am going to use some algebra. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here to solve this problem, but you could reason through this problem again and still get the right answer. So anyways, I'm going to show you the correct uh, result or the correct answer here in just one moment, and then I'm going to go through the steps to use algebra to solve this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love uh, helping people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Okay? Um, basically, here's the deal. If you truly want to learn math, you need three things. One, you need to be uh, willing to work hard. Okay, You need the desire to want to learn and work hard. So if you're one of these people who hates math and you don't want to learn math, listen, if you are in a math class and you want to pass your math class, you have to make a decision that you're willing to put in the work. Okay, so hopefully you're, or, uh, you're, you're willing to do that. Okay, if you are, that's good. The second thing you need is encouragement. Okay, you need someone telling you that you can do this stuff. I'm telling you personally, from me to you, that you can be successful in math. And the third thing you need, and most importantly, this is what you need, is great math instruction. So once someone's teaching you math, you actually understand. I could teach you math in a very technical way, where like, you know, I can sound like a, uh, a robot and sound like I'm just repeating a textbook. That's very confusing. When I teach math, I like to explain math in a way that all people can understand, okay? So if you like to be taught math in that kind of manner, well, listen, I'd like to be able to help you out. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of test prep that you're doing for some sort of exam that has math on it, things like the SAT, ACT, GED, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well as uh, most students take at best average notes. OK, you know who takes exceptional great notes? Those students who get A pluses in math. So if you want to improve your grade and do really, really well in math, you need to take awesome notes. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. The sum of two numbers is 32. One number is one third of the other number. What are the numbers? Well, here are the numbers right here, eight and 24. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got, if you figured this out, okay, irrespective of if you use algebra, you just kind of, you know, did some trial and error, did some mental math, wrote some things down, tested some things out. Listen, as long as you got the right answer, you deserve a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your awesomeness in math today. So nice job. But here's the deal, right? Now you still need to support your conclusion. So for those of you that kind of reasoned through this or kind of, you know, tried some numbers and you're like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, these two numbers work. When I use these numbers, it makes sense. That's fine. You too can still kind of organize your thoughts on paper. 
Okay, even though you're not going to, uh, if you use that uh, strategy, we'll call that the trial and error, common sense, rational approach. That's perfectly fine, but try to organize your thoughts so you can justify it. Okay, uh, math is very much like, let's say, going to court. You need to prove your conclusions, prove your case to who? To your teacher, right? If you got the right answer, you need to say, this is why, uh, you know, here, 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 and here, here. Therefore, I uh, prove to you that these are the right answers. Okay, that's what math, really the essence of mathematics is proving things. Okay, when I was uh, studying theoretical mathematics, probably most of the problems I did at the university level was prove and show that. Show that and prove. Those were my two <laughs> homework problems. Proof. Okay, I was having to prove things, and that's, you know, very difficult. But anyways, not to uh, distract from the problem, um, again, uh, you know, learn to prove your conclusions. But uh, hopefully some of you took this approach, and we're going to use algebra to actually solve this. And uh, uh, this is a basically falls under the topic of a systems of equation or a system of linear equations. So this is a typical type of problem that you would see like in an algebra one course. So anytime you're dealing with a math word problem, okay, what's the first three things you want to do? One, read the problem. Two, uh, step number two is to reread the problem. And the third thing is read the problem one more time and make sure you understand the question. So here again, uh, how do you know what the question is? Just identify that little symbol in the problem called the question mark and then really make sure you understand what's being asked. What are the numbers? What numbers? Well, we are dealing with two numbers. We know that when we add up these two numbers, we get 32 and one of the numbers is one third of the other number. So we need to take all this information and distill it down or model it in some way. Now, oftentimes in math word problems, you can make a sketch or figure or construct a table, but sometimes you can't do that. So what you have to do, though, is use algebra. Okay, if we're going to take the algebra approach, which you should know how to do this anyways, even if you do this another uh, way, is you need to assign a variable because we're dealing with numbers, right? We're like, hey, we're dealing with some numbers we don't know, so we're going to have to... Um, assign some uh, un, uh, variables to represent these unknown values. So let's go ahead and uh, assign X. We'll let X, you can have A or B, or it doesn't make a difference, but use simple variables like X and Y if you don't have any other variables. Don't use things like uh, M and G, things like that. Use X, Y, A, B. So we'll let X uh, equal to one of the numbers. Okay, we're dealing with two numbers, right? And we'll let Y uh, be the other number. Okay, so we have x being one number and y being the other number. So we know that the sum, okay, this means what? When we add up those two numbers, uh, the answer is 32. So let's build some equations now. So once you have variables, you got to do something with those variables to figure out uh, the answer. Okay, so we have to use the rest of the information in the problem to construct some equations. So uh, one equation we can construct is x plus y is equal to uh, 32. Okay, the sum of these two numbers, when we add up these two numbers, we're going to get 32. But I want you to pay attention to something here. Okay, in this setup, I'm using uh, two different variables, x and y. So in algebra, okay, and this is I'm kind of speaking some uh, somewhat general uh, 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 manner here, okay, because there are some technical things. But basically, here's the deal: if I'm just, if I need to solve for x and y, I'm looking to solve for two variables, two different variables, x and y, not just x or not just y. So because I'm solving for two variables, I'm going to need two equations. Okay, so this equation right here is not enough for me to solve for these two variables. I'm going to need two equations that involve two different equations that involve both x and y. Okay, so I have one here. So let's go build another one. And here it is right here. Okay, so we're going to use this part of the problem. All right, one number is one third of the other number. Okay, so we can express that this way. We have one number is one third of that other number. So x is equal to one third y. You could even do y is equal to one third x. It doesn't make a difference, which is turns out to be x or y in the final analysis here, because we will end up with two different numbers. And again, that's what the question is. 
Okay, so now let's observe we have two equations, okay, both in x and y, two different equations because we allowed, uh, we were using two separate variables, two different variables to model this problem. Okay, this is what we call a system or a two variable a linear system. Okay, that's the technical phrase for it. And it's the stuff that you learn in like your Algebra 1 class, maybe pre-algebra, definitely Algebra 1. So now we have to solve for both X and Y. All right, so that is what we need to do right now. And by the way, too, okay, I just want to make one other uh, comment here that I said the sum of two numbers is 32. I used nice E. I kind of made this word prompt nice and easy for some of you out there that didn't know how to use algebra to figure it out. But I could have made the, um, uh, the problem much more difficult, which would have been a lot more difficult to solve just by trial and error, just kind of figuring it out, right? So you still want to know how to solve this using algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we could do here. So what you want to do is use the substitution method. I know that x is equal to one-third of, of y. So I want to create one equation with just one variable, all, either all x's or all y's. So let's replace this x right here, okay, with one-third. I know x is the same thing as one-third y. I'm stating that right there. So let's replace this x in this equation with one-third y. So I'm going to end up with this equation now. One-third y plus y is equal to 32. Now this is one equation in one variable. We can solve for that, and then we will be on the uh, way to getting our final answer. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. All right, so one-third y plus y is what? Well, this is really one y. So one-third plus one is what? One and one-third. All right, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, you can add these fractions up by making this three over three. But you could do it this way as well. This is one y and one third y. So together, there's, that's one and one third y. And one and one third, that mixed fraction, is the same thing as four thirds as an improper fraction, right? Three times one is three, plus one is four, so four thirds. So um, either way, you need to get to this point in the equation four thirds y is equal to 32. All right, so now we just need to solve for y. And this should be nice and easy for those of you out there that are at this level of math. Again, anything you're seeing here, you don't understand, like how to solve basic equations. You need to make a little uh, checklist, be like, okay, I need to work on this, this, and this. Okay, don't look at it and be like, ooh, I hope I don't see that again, because you will absolutely see this again. So how do I solve this equation? Well, the easiest way to do this is to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. Okay, it's the same thing as dividing both sides of the equation by four-thirds, but this is the easiest way to do this, because three... Uh, 3 fourths times 4 thirds is what? 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 over 12 is 1. 1 Y is the same thing as Y. And so now we have 32 times whatever I do to the left-hand side, I got to do the same thing to the right-hand side, right? So uh, this is going to give us Y. That's what I wanted. And now we have 32 over 1 times 3 fourths is what? Well, 4 goes into 32, eight, eight times three is 24. Of course, you can go 32 times three, divide that by four, you'll get the same answer, y is equal to 24. Okay, so that's one of the numbers, okay? So y is equal to 24. So remember, we had our two equations here, x plus y is equal to 32, x is equal to one third y. So if we know y is equal to, uh, to 24, how do we get x? Easy, just replace this y with 24. So let's do that now. So X is going to be one third of 24, which of course is eight. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if this uh, um, works out. Okay. So if X is eight, okay, that would be eight right here, right? Uh, so we'll replace this X with an eight. We know Y is 24. So we have the sum of two numbers is 32. So eight plus 24 is in fact 32. That looks pretty good. And one number is one-third the other number. Well, uh, one-third of 24, is that eight? Yes, that is. So this works out. All right, so this is an illustration of a word problem that you would see in, again, like an Algebra 1 course in a systems of equation chapter or unit. Okay, so if you're studying systems of equations, two variable linear systems, there's all sorts of different types of systems in mathematics. Uh, it all depends on what level of math you're at. If you're at the pre-calculus level, you can be dealing with systems of non-linear equations or three variable systems. Okay, So when it comes to word problems, it's, you, and you want to get better at word problems, it's all about 
what level of math you're at and what topic you're studying. Okay. But hopefully, you know, you, you're getting a sense of, you know, if you're faced with a word problem, okay, uh, don't give up so quickly because you might just be able to reason through it to get the answer, even though it may not be, you know, using um, algebra, you could still possible to get the answer on some of these more basic questions. That's really important to keep in mind for those you're going to be taking exams like the SAT, ACT, GED, etc. right? Never, ever, ever give up on a question. All right, so if you need help, again, with this, I have additional um, word problem videos on my YouTube channel, all different types and flavors. But uh, if you um, are looking to improve in uh, this uh, specific topic, again, check out my Algebra 1 course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.